While Need for Speed's release calendar has never slowed down, it's been a full three years since we've seen a game from the main team at EA's Black Box Studio. Does this cinematic road trip have that new car smell, or does it stink like a drive past a dairy farm? <laughs> Jack Rourke's in trouble with the mob, big enough trouble to get himself nearly killed in a car crusher. To pay back what he owes, he enters a cross-country street race from San Francisco to New York that somehow has enough backing for a $25 million payout. Along the way, he'll awkwardly gawk at Sports Illustrated models, fight the police, and take a million-dollar supercar from a Russian stranger simply by name-dropping his eye-catching promoter. Screen time for rival racers is limited to a paragraph of text on a loading screen, and even the mobsters are only seen in fleeting glimpses. It's really just a string of action scenes with throwaway characters, but the simple premise gives context to driving like your life depends on it. What? Speak up! Las Vegas, top 150 or out. Okay, got it. The run is essentially one long race across America, but to prevent you from getting to New York at 100th place, each stretch of road has you aiming for a specific spot in the ranks. The map is separated into 10 stages, with three to five races each. In addition to passing cars, you'll race against the clock to reach checkpoints and engage in one-on-one -on -one battles with tougher drivers, fighting to take the lead in a set amount of time. Autolog returns to compare times against friends, and every moment of the race you can see how you're doing in the upper corner of the screen. Between races, you can get a broader view with a personalized speed wall, and by the end, you'll clock in around two hours for the full run. That may sound short, but keep in mind that time doesn't include cutscenes, menus, or retries. That's two hours of pure road without laps or repetition. However, improving your times is cumbersome, as the episodic structure doesn't let you repeat specific events. You'll have to replay a full stage with multiple races to set a new time, and you can't even skip cutscenes or quick time events, the latter of which are thankfully few and far between. As you race, you gain XP for passing opponents, drifting, jumping, and more, leveling up your driver profile across both single-player and multiplayer to unlock emblems, extras, and gameplay mechanics like nitrous and drafting. Progress through the run also unlocks a set of challenges, letting you test your skills to beat times for gold and platinum medals in over 50 scenarios. Multiplayer puts an emphasis on becoming part of a group, ranking your performance through playlists of three to five races. Once you finish a set, players vote on a new playlist, and a spin of a bonus wheel determines what rewards will be given to the top drivers in the next set, providing incentive to stick around and compete for bonus XP or a rare car. The game also provides a checklist of objectives to complete during races, whether they amount to getting more jumps or passing others using nitrous. There are individual objectives and group objectives, and rather than being overwhelmed with everything at once, you only have a few available at a time, giving you something to strive for, even if you're farther down the ranks. The run has over 120 cars, with EA flexing exclusive agreements to deliver the likes of Porsche and the Pagani Huayra, to make up for the lack of other manufacturers like Ferrari. It should be noted that some cars are also platform exclusive, like the Bugatti Veyron Supersport, which you can only drive on PS3. There's no tuning or customization this time, so a number of cars are just souped-up variations of the ones you already have. The oddest thing about the car selection, though, is how you change vehicles in the career. Rather than choosing a car from the menu, you have to look for gas stations and pull over mid-race, sometimes losing position in the process. Composed entirely of point-to-point -point races, the run is less about course memorization than raw reaction time. Whether you're dodging freeway traffic, skirting your way through a winding mountain pass, or finding a shortcut through farmland, the game is full of thrills. These are amplified in big set-piece moments that have you racing through dust storms and avalanches, but it's disappointing that a tornado never materializes from a threatening Midwest thunderstorm. The series' staple police chases have you trading paint with the authorities and threading through tricky roadblocks, but unlike past games, the run never escalates to spike strips or EMP blasts. Instead, midway through the game, there are a handful of run-ins with mobsters and helicopters and SUVs. Rather than increasing the adrenaline, though, dealing with relentless machine gun fire and regenerating health only manages to feel annoying and unreasonable. Thankfully, it's a brief detour that's soon followed up by some of the best races in the game. Handling is straightforward with cars fitting into muscle, tuner, or supercar classes. Taking tight corners can be a bit tricky, as you'll need to learn how to finesse the car through rather than effortlessly drifting around every switchback. While bumping opponents is fun, the experience system gives added rewards for clean passing and dodging roadblocks. 
From urban alleyways to dusty trails, most courses are full of beneficial shortcuts and deceptive side routes, all of which really come alive as drivers split up in multiplayer. Run offers a gorgeous view of America. From snowy mountain passes to the South Dakota badlands and eastern forests with bright falling leaves, the visual journey never gets old. Up close, the technical details don't always hold up as there are some gritty textures, low detailed interiors, and poor performance in cutscenes. Pre-configured damage models can sometimes look like the cars went through a blender, but there's a joyous ballet of sparks and steel when you slam into oncoming traffic at full speed. The soundtrack veers away from the typical punk and electronica for some rootsy rock and roll fitting for a good road trip, and dramatic orchestrations underscore the Hollywood tension. Need for Speed The Run falters with its high-profile but underdeveloped plot, as well as some awkward design choices. However, it overcomes these potholes with courses that are a blast to drive and simple multiplayer that keeps you hooked in.